Yes, there is a right, let me say it again, a better way to diagnose patients when they have knee pain. And in this video, I will tell you the number one rule that you have to remember when you have these patients right in front of you. Also, we're gonna go over the top three best clinical approaches to apply. You can use these clinical strategies in primary care, in urgent care, in specialty clinic settings, basically in every setting that you can think of. Then I'll explain how you can easily use these straightforward strategies to grow your clinical confidence. And make sure that you stick around to the end because I will also go over the four quick maneuvers that I use to quickly rule out a ligament injury. I will teach you how to apply this knowledge no matter how much orthopedic or lack of orthopedic experience you have. Also, I will share with you how to access the free must-have ortho guide for nurse practitioners. Hello everyone, it's Jessica here from NP Insiders, where I help you expand your nurse practitioner clinical knowledge and fast track your career growth and practice, all while making it enjoyable. You've come to the right place. If you're new here, make sure that you click that subscribe button, all the links that I mentioned in this video, you'll be able to find them in the description box below. So let's jump into it. One of the top reasons why patients seek medical care is related to some musculoskeletal pain. Yeah, you heard that right. You know this from practice. I researched the facts and came to find out that patients spent a whopping $213 billion annually seeking help from their healthcare providers to relieve their musculoskeletal related symptoms. So people like you and I can have a significant impact on our patients. For example, in primary care, knee pain related diagnoses are at the top of the list. Yet, despite the frequency of these complaints from our patients, many primary care providers, be it nurse practitioners, physicians uh, associates, or physicians, continue to feel unprepared to manage them appropriately. So gaining knowledge in this topic will make you a better nurse practitioner provider hands down and it'll also make you more well-rounded in your mp skill set plus patients really do appreciate when nurse practitioners can help them relieve their pain and i promise you that we can do this without using narcotics in this video i will go over the first rule to evaluating knee pain how to ask those key history taking questions and the four buckets that you can use when diagnosing a patient that has knee pain this is the framework that I use to fit patients with these complaints and I see them in clinical practice. And stick around until the end because I will go over the four quick maneuvers that I use quickly to rule out a ligament injury. So number one, the number one rule when you are evaluating knee pain is rule out emergencies. Yes, and this is every time you see a patient with knee pain. The main knee emergency that you have to or must rule out is a septic knee arthritis. These patients will present to you with a red, swollen knee and pain that may be out of proportion to what you're accustomed to see. These patients with a septic knee may not even be able to bear weight. Another trick of the trade is to ask the patient if there was some sort of trauma or injury involved. This will be able to help you out with your di differential diagnoses. Another pro tip that I use when evaluating musculoskeletal complaints is to make sure that you watch the patient's ambulate. You really do not want to miss anything because you didn't pay attention when they were walking, right? I don't think you do. Don't miss that. Okay. So now that we got the first key pearl out of the way, let's talk about the three best approaches to properly diagnose knee pain. Number one, begin with good history taking and really, listen to what I'm going to say, really pay close attention to what the patient is telling you. Is this an acute type of pain? Is this more of a chronic type of pain in nature? And when did the pain begin? Does the patient have knee pain when going up or down the stairs? Have they experienced swelling? How often? Is, was there any injury involved? What kind of treatments have they tried? Do they work? Oh, and by the way, the whole morning stiffness to rule out knee arthritis, honestly, doesn't work that very, that, that very well for me. Um, I know we learned this in school, but I don't find that very useful in the real life, like when you practice. Okay, so number two, you need 
to know what kind of mechanical symptoms the patient has. So let's break it down. What are mechanical symptoms, right? Well, ask your patients if they're experiencing locking, catching, or instability. Those are kind of like the main ones. If the patient says, yes, my knee is giving way, then you want to lean more on a ligament-related injury as the main reason for the cause of the knee pain. But there's a caveat too. Some patients may have knee pain that, and complaints that a knee is giving way, but it could also be related to a quadricep weakness. So keep that in mind. If the patient says that, then you can follow up by asking them to clarify or make sure that they clearly describe how so, how is the pain in more detail and how is it that the knee is giving way. Three, every time you're faced with a knee pain complaint, I want you to think about your DDX, your differential diagnoses. We can fit this kind of complaint in about four categories. These are ligament injuries, meniscus injuries, osteoarthritis, good old osteoarthritis, and patellofemoral joint issues. Actually, five categories, because we also have tendonitis-related triggers that can cause patients to have knee pain. These are more things like iliotibial bands, uh, patellar and quadricep weakness, and things like that. But many times, it is also referred pain from the hip or the back, believe it or not. So when conservative treatment fails, you have to think about other causes, like could this be an osteoarthritis of the knee or even lumbar pathology? And those are good things that you have to keep in mind. So now that we have reviewed the main things that I said we were gonna review, let's jump into the four quick tactics that I use in clinical practice to rule out a ligament injury faster. Number one is the patient's history. To start off, I want to say that it requires a lot of force to tear a ligament. If the patient was involved in a sports-related trauma and complaints of instability, then go ahead and suspect a possible ACL tear. The ACL, or anterior cruciate ligament, is as wide as a pinky finger, and it prevents the knee from moving forward, translating forward. So in ortho terms, it has, when, when you're examining these patients, the patients should have an endpoint that you're able to feel in the physical knee exam. If you cannot feel that endpoint, then probably an ACL tear might be suspected and it should be at the top of your DDX list. Number two, learn and become familiar with the Lagman test. In my clinical opinion, the Lagman maneuver test is better than the drawer test and easier too. As a new clinician doing this, you're also able to visualize and see and feel that the knee does not have an endpoint when you do this test. You will see and feel that the knee kind of like translates and moves forward. And that basically is the key thing to pay attention to when you're putting this into practice. Number three, have the patient lay on the physical exam table and distract them. Ask them unrelated questions. How was your vacation? What are you doing next week? So that they don't contract when you're trying to do the Lackman test. Because trust me, they will. And then you're not going to know, is this Lackman test positive? Is this, is this negative? Another thing that I do is I palpate both sides of the back of their knee. And that also helps them to relax. And it makes the test a lot easier for me to be able to see if this is really an ACL injury. Number four, having the patient laying down, grab the knee and place it at 30 degrees of flexion. Make sure that you know kind of like your range of motion so that you can know what 30 degrees of flexion look like. That is the ultimate position necessary to achieve results when you're testing the Lackman test. If the patient has an ACL tear, then you're going to see anterior tibia translation, or basically the tibia is moving forward in relation to the patella and the femur. If you're not familiar with the range of motion degrees, then you may benefit from getting a goniometer. I'll try to link that to the description box below. If you apply this knowledge, no matter how much orthopedic or lack of orthopedic experience you have, I promise you that it's going to help you to rule in or rule out an ACL tear from a clinical standpoint. 
And you can do this whether you're in primary, urgent care, emergency room, specialty practice, in your home, anywhere. All right. So what are the take-home points that I want you to remember? Let's recap. Number one, rule out emergencies. You have to rule out a septic knee whenever you have a patient that's complaining of kneeping. And it's very easy. Rewind. I'll tell you how. Number two, history, history, history. It will guide you to the correct diagnosis. The patient has the answer. Make sure that you find it. Number three, remember the four main categories to diagnose knee pain. We went over them. Rewind again. Go back and re-listen to them. Ligament injuries, meniscus injuries, osteoarthritis, and patellofemoral joint issues. Number four, learn and practice the Lagman maneuver test so that you can rule out or rule in an ACL tear. So at the start of the video, I mentioned that I'm going to tell you how to access the free ortho guide for nurse practitioners to help you maximize your skills and time in clinical practice. There is a link in the description box below where you can go and grab your copy for free today. It is going to be an absolute game changer, especially if you're not familiar with musculoskeletal care. All right, that's it for today. I'll see you on the next video. Thank you so much for watching.